kwenye awamu ya pili ya taarifa za mbio ya KTN. Mahakama ya Migori imezindua mbinu ya kutatua mizozo inayolenga kupunguza mrundiko wa kesi kwenye mahakama hiyo akihutubia kikao na wanahabari baada ya uzinduzi huo jaji Oscar Angote alisema mbinu hiyo itazingatia kutatua kesi za mizozo ya nyumbani pamoja na ardhi ambazo huchukua muda mrefu kukamilika aidha mbinu hiyo mpya inapania kumaliza msururu wa kesi zilizo limbikizo kwenye kaunti ya Migori na kwenye kaunti jirani za Homa Bay na Nyamira ambako mawakili na wateja wao wanadaiwa kusababisha kuchelewa kukamilika kwa kesi hizo. Na ningependa Rosalinda ni kitu gani ambao unaweza nionyesha mbele ya hima? Yeye waya 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 ube The court and next uh, mediation program simply means that uh, we are encouraging the members of the public, the litigants in our court, those who have already filed cases, to refer the cases to the mediators. And we have got accredited mediators. Uh, we have introduced them to the members of the public in Megori here. There are quite a number. And the purpose of this program is to reduce the backlog. As a government, we, we join the judiciary in a, a, as part of our commitment, part of the other set of the, the government, of the national government. And also, as we are discussing, the government had offered a space for the mediation team where they can have the county is going to provide the space and also as a county government will take a, the side of awareness and encouraging the Bigorian to adopt and uh, accept this way of sorting issues especially related to land issues and also as a county government uh, uh, we, we will wish we, we will take up the mediation way in handling some of the cases dealing within the county government na kama nilivyokuwa nimekueleza hapo awali mtazamaji ni kwamba tunafuatilia kesi ambapo mhubiri Ezekiel Odero amewasili amefikishwa katika mahakama ya Shanzu na kwa hivi sasa tuvuke hadi katika eneo hilo tusikize matukio katika mahakama hiyo ya Shanzu. With one surety of similar amount or an alternative of cash bill of 1.5 million shillings. B the bond bail terms granted in year above shall subsist until the respondent is formally charged and or until investigations are concluded. C, the respondent shall not before being formally charged. It is important uh, regarding the respondent. The respondent shall not before being formally charged or while investigations are ongoing address, make comments or discuss in public any matters concerning the events relating to what is now commonly referred to as the Chakahola massacre. D, the respondent shall report to the investigating officer once a week on a day of the week and time of the day to be agreed upon by the prosecution counsel and the defense counsel. And lastly, parties will be at liberty to apply for the closure of this file once investigations are closed. Those are the orders of the court. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the ruling has to be I the double. The ruling. So the, the ruling it is the I, I had to type it in a hurry. I need to polish it up. And uh, so you'll, uh, you'll have a copy here. Yeah. na mtazamaji ni kesi hiyo ya mhubiri Ezekiel Odero ambaye mahakama imempa fueni hata zuiliwa kwa siku zingine 30 na kwenye uamuzi huo jaji amesema kwamba uh, mhubiri huyo anahitajika ana kuwa akiripoti mara moja kwa wiki kwa maafisa wanaoendeleza uchunguzi wa kesi inayomkabili ikiwa ni pamoja na kuzuiliwa kuzungumzia hadharani kuhusiana na matukio 
kama kuhusiana na kesi hiyo mengi kuhusiana na taarifa hiyo ni kwenye taarifa zetu za KTN leo na pamoja na KTN Prime tukiendelea wawakilishi wadi wa bunge la kaunti ya Makueni wamekosoa vikali wizara ya kilimo ya kaunti hiyo kwa kutowahusisha kwenye mpangilio kuendesha mradi wa kilimo mashinani unaofadhiliwa na serikali kuu wakidai kwamba huenda kutemwa kuwa kwenye mradi huo kulitoa nafasi ya ufisadi kwenye kikao cha kamati ya usimamizi wa jumla ya bunge hilo na maafisa wa wizara hiyo wawakilishi hao walidai kuwa kuna baadhi ya maafisa wa wizara hiyo waliojipatia kandarasi kwenye mradi huo kinyume na sheria wakiongozwa na waziri wa kilimo katika kaunti hiyo ya Makueni Joyce Mutua maafisa hao walikuwa wamefika mbele ya kamati ya usimamizi wa jumla ya bunge la kaunti hiyo kujibu maswali kuhusiana na utekelezaji wa mradi huo And Mr. Speaker, I can confirm you that there were some officers in the Department of Agriculture who were some of the contractors. Maybe some of them supplied chicken, Mr. Speaker, and they did the project themselves, Mr. Speaker. That is why they could not even produce BQ for us. He doesn't have a copy of the financial reports. He doesn't have a report of monitoring of mission. But there's a report in Parliament on Nari in Makwen. And so is one of the best. And so is one of the form of silver. And so is one of the best. Will the first person, will they know that there's a report in Makwen or touching on Makwen or Nari issues when they do not know the existence of the project? That was a game connected to chew a lot of money without being questioned. And that's why the MCA was kept out. 200 attendees in every. My office was not aware. And I don't know whether the other members were aware. And those treatings were aware. And we can share minutes of the discussions that we have had um, with regard to moving forward. But previously, uh, that I can confirm that uh, those engagements were not happening. We were inviting the, the government administration, that is the world administrator and the government administrators, hoping that they will invite the, the, the members. But after that engagement, and after we realized that some of them were not invited, in the, the current engagement, one by we are mobilizing the circles, the walls form circles, uh, all the MCS where we are working, where Nari is in the brand walls, we invited them directly. Bado nikigusia kidogo tu kuhusiana na tukio katika mahakama ya Shanzu ni kwamba uh, mhubiri Ezekiel Odero ameachiliwa kwa dhamana ya shilingi milioni tatu na mahakama ya Shanzu. Kwingineko kikundi kimoja cha waimbaji wa nyimbo za injili kaunti ya Busia kimeanzisha zoezi la uhamasishaji kuhusu muhimu wa upanzi wa miti mbali na uboreshaji wa mazingira. Waimbaji hao wamechukua hatua hiyo ili kusaidia kutimiza malengo ya serikali ya kupanda miti zaidi mwaka huu. Wakizungumza wakati wa uzinduzi wa zoezi hilo katika shule ya msingi ya Amoni katika eneo bunge la Teso Kusini baada ya kupanda miti shuleni na kufanya usafi mjini Busia mwenyekiti wake Amos Wesonga alitoa changamoto kwa wakazi kuhakikisha kuwa wanaendeleza shughuli ya upanzi wa miti ili kuhifadhi mazingira So I mean kasi na ni na watu ambao Hii ni e, moja wapo ya zile program ambazo tunafanya e, tuko na environmental conservation program ambayo tumeona kwamba sisi kama waimbaji ni lazima tuwe na kitu ambacho pia tunafanyia jamii kwa sababu jamii inatusupport sana wananchi ama wakazi wa kaunti hii wanatusupport sana kama waimbaji ama wanasanaa kutoka katika kaunti hii na sisi pia tukafikiria kwamba kando na kuhudumu ama kuimba tu na kufikia watu pia ni vizuri kwamba tuweze kuwa na kitu ambacho tunaweza kufanyia jamii na imisa kwa jamii kwa ujumla pandemiti na upanzi wa miti ndio ndio suluhisho ya climate change ndio suluhisho ya landslides na umonyoka udongo so it's a national uh, focus to be na 15 billion in the next 10 years hasa yote tutashirikiana whichever way kama ni kwa shule kwa institutions kwa barabara kwa maboma tutashirikiana sana 
to Pazua meat. The rate you are harvesting is good sana. For the last 10 years, to my potential so many trees, but we are able to recover from what we have wasted so that uh, easy meat we reduce inch by the GIA and Atakikana. So, Babu, your climate change, Amata Bianchi, already not to affect Panjia Ningi, Naitapanya Maisha, who are expensive. So, Bumagonja at Tokeuko, who harvest it at Punguka, as a Lazima Zote to combine. Wakulima kadha kaunti ya Uasingishu wanakadiria hasara kutokana na mafuriko yaliyoharibu mimea yao pamoja na barabara hali ambayo imeadhiri shughuli nyingi. Miongoni mwa vituo vilivyoharibiwa ni kituo cha matibabu cha Chembulet katika gatuzi dogo la Moiben. Mvua kubwa inayoshuhudiwa katika maeneo hayo imeathiri pakubwa shughuli za wakulima kuendeleza kilimo huku maafisa wa kaunti ya Uasingishu wakichukua hatua za dharura ikiwa ni pamoja na kuchimba mitaro waziri wa barabara wa kaunti ya Uasingishu mhandisi Joseph Lagat akiwa na mwenzake wa afya daktari Sami Kutut walizuru sehemu zilizoathiriwa na mafuriko kutathmini uharibifu huo huku watu waliojenga kwenye maeneo hatari wakishauriwa kuhama uh, the, the lines that have been draining water from around uh, this area the hospital and the farms nearby were obstructed uh, by farmers downstream now what happened is, is that uh, because of the heavy rains that we have witnessed in the last few days, uh, there was a serious clock and uh, a lot of water accumulated into a pool around here. And uh, that uh, seeped back and uh, interfered uh, with the septic uh, that serves this hospital or this facility of uh, Chambulet Health Center. Now we have also had uh, this challenge. Storm drain here in Chambulet Health Center was a problem for the last one week when we had water, excess water, excess rain. Uh, this is a session where there is a lot of rains in this part of the area. And so uh, what it happened, what happened is that the water blocked the sewer of, of the hospital, which had clogged the septic tank. So what we have done the whole morning is to negotiate with the farmers around here, around the hospital, to allow us to drain the water through their farm and thereby getting the water out of the hospital because when the septic tank uh, flooded, uh, it, it really made a big mess here and so we had to come. This happened uh, the last two days, but yesterday and today we have uh, managed to clear the problem. Kongamano lililo waleta pamoja wa wakilishi wadi wote nchini kwa mara ya kwanza kujadili swala la mishahara yao hapa jijini Nairobi siku ya Jumatano lilikamilika bila mwafaka wa wote au suluhu yoyote. Wa wakilishi wadi wenye hamaki kwa kukosa walio wataka kusikiza kilio chao walimfurusha katibu mkuu wa ugatuzi Teresia Mbaka aliyewasili kuwatuliza wakisisitiza kuwa walitaka kujadili swala hilo tu na Rais William Ruto au naibu wa ke eh, regarde gashagwa na kama anavyo tuarifu mwanahabari wetu David Muthoka wawakilishi wadi hao sasa wametishia kususia kazi hadi pale mishahara itakapoongezeka itaka na vile vile hadi pale masuala mengine walivyoibua yatakavyoshughulikiwa Jumatano asubuhi wawakilishi wadi kutoka kila pembe ya taifa walifurika ukumbi wa KICC hapa Nairobi kulikuandaliwa kongamano la kwanza la wawakilishi wadi wote nchini sababu kuu ya kuandaa kongamano hilo ilikuwa kujadili masuala nyeti ambayo wawakilishi wadi hao wanadai yamewasa kama likiwemo swala la mishahara pamoja na swala la hazina ya wadi Kwa muda sasa, viongozi hao wanaopokea mshahara wa shilingi elfu themanini na sita, wamekua kitaka mishahara yao kuongezwa hadi shilingi elfu mianne. Aitha, viongozi hao wamekua kitaka serikali kuu kuidhinisha pendekezo la kubuniwa kwa hazine ya wadi inayofanana na hazine ya CDF inayosimamiwa na wabunge na ambayo waondio watakuwa wakisimamia. Diwani baada ya diwani, Iwe ni kutoka sehemu za upinzani au sehemu zinazoonga mkono serikali walizungumza kila moja akitoa wito kwa serikali kusikiza kilio chao. Tulifanya uchaguzi kura zikawa sita. Ni 
kuwa na kura ya rais si ndio kukakuwa na kura ya gavana kukakuwa na kura ya senator kukakuwa na kura ya women kukakuwa na kura ya mbunge kukakuwa na kura ya mtie zote zilikuwa zinapigwa na wajiko nani kwani hii kura yetu hii ilitupiga hii kwani ilikuwa hotu Kwenye kusaka mwafaka wa changamoto hizi joto la kisiasa ukumbini lilipanda. Katibu mkuu Ogatuzi Teresia Mbaika alipofika kwa niaba ya naibu rais Rigathi Gashagwa kujaribu kuwatuliza alielekezewa hamaki zote na kuamuriwa aondoke na asireje pasi rais William Ruto au naibu rais Rigathi Gashagwa. Sisi hatutaki intermediary. Madiwani hao sasa wametishia kutopitisha bajeti za kaunti zao za mwaka wa kifedha unaokuja na kususia vikao vya vyote vya bunge endapo serikali ya kitaifa haitotoa jibu katika wiki mbili zijazo kinachosubiriwa sasa ni kuona jinsi serikali ya rais William Ruto itakavyoshughulikia haya wakati sasa mgogoro kati ya wawakilishi wadi na serikali kuu unazidi kutokota David Muthoka KTN News Nairobi Mradi wa kuimarisha kilimo biashara kupitia utafiti wa kisayansi kwa wakulima wa chama cha ushirika cha pamba na viazi pavu umezinduliwa katika kaunti ya Kwale. Mradi huu wa kipindi cha miaka mitano utagarimu zaidi ya shilingi milioni tatu uliofadhiliwa na serikali ya Australia. Katibu katika Wizara ya Vyama vya Ushirika Patrick Kilemi amewataka wakulima na wafanyi biashara za wastani kujiunga na vyama hivyo ili kunufaika na fursa ya kuendelea za biashara zao vikundi 30 na vinane vya wakulima chini ya chama cha ushirika cha pamba na viazi pavu vitanufaika huku wakulima wakipata mafunzo ya kufanya kilimo hicho Kenya has for seven uh, good afternoon ladies and gentlemen to go back home and thank you for my government architect of this project nani other than Deb Dwan this research has to be used by farmers who are people And these people need to understand why this change is necessary. Why do they need to change the kind of seed they're using? Why do they need to um, farm differently? Why do they need to use mechanization? Why do they need to spray their farms? This one will keep us at an edge, you know, in embracing, you know, gap that is good agricultural practice. And as a result of that, you know, we're going to have the low cost of production at the expense of maximizing profits. Hence, you know, making this farmer smile all his way to the bank. The story of branding other lands as high productive and other lands as low productive. Pavi project has proved that even here cotton grows. Am I right? Am I right? And therefore, if that is the experience, it means a number of crops can grow here. That lasting legacy that we all wanted to attain is actually achievable and what we need to do is to focus on key issues that will help Pavi to now protect itself attain what we call market power kama watu wa kwale wanalima pamba na wakokuwa wameungana kama cooperative wageenda kwa soko they can negotiate their price as a big unit and they'll be respected as opposed to go to the market na pamba yako ya ika moja kwenda kwa soko ukienda the market is being dictated by who by the buyer and so i commend the research team for striving to elevate their work to an evidence based learnings and transferable knowledge opportunities that focus on developing small 
Pikipiki imetajwa kupendelewa na wakenya wengi kufuatia urahisi wa kupenyeza kwenye msongamano wa magari haswa katika maeneo ya miji harakati ka harakati za kuboresha muundo na urahisi wa chombo hicho kampuni ya Kibo Africa imezindua aina mpya ya pikipiki yenye uwezo wa kuepuka msongamano na kuwapa watumizi starehe zaidi pamoja na kulinda mazingira akizungumza wakati wa uzinduzi wa aina mpya ya pikipiki afisa mkuu mtendaji wa Kibo Hub Van De amesema walizingatia hitaji kubwa kwa Wakenya kutumia chombo hicho kwa usafiri bila kuongeza gharama katika usafiri kulingana na muungano wa wadau katika sekta ya pikipiki humu nchini idadi za pikipiki zilizosajiliwa imeongezeka The police has got quite a number of proposals and these proposals we expect the government will be moving to come up with what is called National Automotive Council. The council will actually be the platform that will now be uh, working on ways and means and everything that should be done to promote the, the automotive sector. We have an advantage because we have done this research here in Kenya and we have listened to what our customers need and we've come up with the bikes that they actually need so they last and they, they meet the needs when you go up country uh, when you carry heavy payloads when you uh, need to be sure that you get from A to B even if it's very remote your Kibo bike will always get you there they last and even when you decide to sell we don't we hope you never do but even when you decide to sell 10 years down the line there will still be a residual value in that bike and that's due to the quality na mtazamaji taarifa hiyo inatukamilishia taarifa za mbiu ya KTN. Asanti sana kwa wote waliofanikisha taarifa hizi na pia kwa kwa mtazamaji nasema asanti sana kwa muda wako.